in chapter 1 uh, arjuna says you know let me go i want to see what these people are up to these sees the two armies his um, he suddenly loses all confidence drops his bow and says i am not going to fight <clears throat> So the summary of the second chapter is that Sri Krishna tells him, why are you so, uh, you know, getting so upset by this thought that everybody is going to die or you are going to kill everybody? You, why do you think you are the doer? Whoever is born is going to die. That which... Uh, drives everything is the Brahman. So you are not the doer. If you think you are the doer, you are making a mistake. So then he goes on to explain the nature of Brahman. And the most important nature in cognizing the Brahman is that which is permanent is Brahman. That which is impermanent is Maya. It is the derivation, whatever comes out of the Brahman, uh, uh, whatever you see today, and that which has come out of the Brahman. All that comes out and that which is Maya is going is all temporary. And that is what he is saying. So what he says is, considering that you are. Everybody here is going to die and everything is temporary. Do your duty. Perform your Kshatriya Dharma. He is very clear. Your Dharma as a Kshatriya is to fight. So fight. Stop worrying about the consequences. And approach your functioning with steady awareness. In the meantime, he is also saying that your ability to get to the Brahman, through intellectual understanding of the Brahman is a very important thing. So this is the summary of chapter 2. Then in chapter 3 it starts with, Arjuna says, Boss, if you are saying that wisdom is superior to action, why are you asking me to slaughter all these people? You know that I have a capability, but you are asking me to go and do everything that uh, my capability will allow me to do. Now, what Sri Krishna then says is that karma, everything is karma. All action is defined by karma, which comes out of guna, which is driven by prakriti. All action comes out of prakriti, which is driven by guna. This I am talking about is verse 5. Now for the rest of the class today, I will be talking only about Guna, how it emerges from the Brahman and what are the various aspects or the various manifestations of Guna. The first part is what is Guna? How do we identify the various Guna? Though Sri Krishna talks about Guna later on in greater detail, I am going to take a little bit, uh, I am going to bring that forward a bit because it is important for us to understand what is Guna. And the only way we can un understand Guna is by looking at the manifestation of Guna. There are fundamentally three Gunas. Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. Tamas is inertness, that which is uh, inertia, that which is fear, driven by anxiety, and that which is uh, which where there is no real logic applied to an outcome or to a response. That is tamas. The second is rajas. Rajas is action. Action driven by passion, ambition. 
So, tamas is an inward force, rajas is an outward flowing force. Sattva is balance. So, uh, let me give you an example of a ball. If you have a ball, it is in a state of rest. That state of rest is not sattva. It's a state of rest which is in the context of many things else. Or you can say, okay, that state of rest is inertia. So, it is tamas. You push the ball. That energy that is applied to the ball is rajas. At some point in time, the ball which has got the force will start slowing down. It will go from fast to slow. And there will be a simple point where it will transition from fast to slow. That small point, that brief interval is sattva. Which is why sattva is the most difficult state to achieve. But it is still a state. In our system, tamas is defined by Shiva. Rajas is defined by Brahma. And Sattva is defined by Vishnu. Vishnu balances the universe. Brahma just creates. And because creation by itself is mindless, he needs, a f he needs two things. One is he needs knowledge or process knowledge, how to do things, which is why Saraswati is with him. Also, he needs a framework on which he can produce. And that framework needs to have a logic. That is why he is emerging out of the navel of Vishnu. To give you a more vivid example, we all know that during a sexual action, the brain stops functioning. That is rajas, pure rajas. And that is the hallmark of Brahma, which is why Brahma by himself is not really worshipped in any place. Because he is mindless, unless Saraswati is there. Vishnu by himself, he exists by himself, but he is defined as materiality by the existence of Lakshmi. As uh, Lalita Madam said, the material existence of health, wealth, intellectual capability, emotional intelligence, all of this is defined by the material existence of Lakshmi. Then what about Shiva? Shiva is the founding principle of this particular framework. What happens is that when Brahman exists, Brahman is the source, the state of Null or what we call Paramartha Satya and you can experience it when you are in a state of Kevala Kumbhaka. Kevala Kumbhaka means that state which is there in the Garbhagraha of a temple where there is nothing. It is a state of nothing. It is a cognitive state of nothing. It is not zero. It is a cognitive state. That means you should be able to cognize. If you can cognize, then you are in a state of Samadhi or you have achieved Moksha. That state is the state of the Brahman. And from that Brahman, that Brahman experiences a spandana or a atemporal vibration, that state of null. For example, if you peep, if each of us was to just sit quietly, after some time, within us, all kinds of things will start bubbling up. That bubbling that happens is spandana. It, it has actually see, is something that drives from within. The, so the same thing happens to the Brahman. So when that Brahman begins to experience that kind of uh, drive, 
it has to act and so it emerges from nothing when it is a mega thing a big identity it is called purusha the building block of a purusha is shiva then that purusha manifests as prakriti for as long as that purusha is not recognized the purusha does not know whether it exists or it does not exist this creates an anxiety in purusha we need always to be able to cognize that we exist and if that existence is not defined we inevitably experience great anxiety and that anxiety is is the one that brings prakriti or keeps drawing prakriti back the the movement of consciousness of uh, uh, purusha driving inward drives prakriti inwards and more anxiety is manifested out of purusha when another purusha is found that purusha experiences great ananda so here you have two primordial emotions the first emotion is one of bhaya bhaya means do i exist that is the existential bhaya all bhaya is existential anxiety if you go and say something to somebody suddenly you will be anxious are boss what happens if somebody comes and laughs at me the fear of being laughed at often stops us from acting and if when we stop or do not act then we are restraining ourselves that restraining does not necessarily have to be correct correct so what happens is that when purusha acts there is an experience of anxiety which is forcing the purusha to go out when that purusha experiences sees another purusha and establishes a bond that bond first experiences of ananda i exist that is why whether it is a jiva or a jadam we need these to reinforce our own sense of existence we are a purusha for those that are resident within us every time we breathe in there is a purusha that is going in that is seeking some form of uh, assurance that it exists right now out here hundreds of millions of purushas or shivas are getting generated most of them are not getting cognized because they don't get cognized they all merge back into the brahman those that get cognized will try to establish a bond so the first thing that they do is to try and hold on to that particular thing which is allowing it to be cognized and uh, one minute what you what did you say they all merge back into what into the brahman they come from null if they are not cognized they have no place to go so they all go back into the null no i didn't understand this can you please uh, explain okay. more okay let us say that you are going in a state of equilibrium your mind is blank you don't you, you are not aware of your body right you are in a state of equilibrium you are in a completely neutral state let us for the sake of this particular experiment assume that that is the brahman you meet a friend okay you relate to that person you say hi or something like that the other person simply ignores you now what happens first thing you get deflated you feel my god what's happened to me why is what am i going to do now so that your consciousness moves inward and your identity begins to feel that fear of not being 
uh, relevant then you go home and a loved person speaks nicely to you your sense of identity is reinforced now the question is you came into existence on the basis of the brahman on this foundation you are the purusha similarly all other existence are all happening continuously the minute they do not get suppose an identity comes out of nothing if it does not get in a a, a cognition if it does not get confirmation of existence what would happen to it it will it will just keep on hanging around for some time and at one point it will accept that i don't exist if the confirmation does not go to that particular entity what will it do it will say no i don't exist i will go back to into a, no, a state of non existence no am i making sense to yeah. you yeah 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 at uh, this particular example i understood but suppose i mean uh, i i'm sure it is similarly for others it, uh, where if we happen to meet somebody and somebody doesn't answer in fact uh, if at all uh, i would think that uh, uh, um, okay i would notice it that he didn't or she didn't but the worry will be are uh, something must be the matter you know you yes, feel no, no. concerned now, about the person you, you feel concerned your intellectual no intellectual is. that is the way uh, uh, i don't See, know i feel identity, your sense of identity allows you to think like that that does not happen with everybody else your sense of identity gives you that confidence to think that that other person may think is, is having uh, this when i when we are children when we go to school if your friend does not talk to you when you were in school when you were very young you will come back and say, she did not talk to me why because that need for reaffirmation of identity is there you have, it is very very fragile at that state today your sense of identity is highly evolved which is why today you you, you are unable to relate to the example but when you were a child if a, if your classmate did not talk to you or best friend did not talk to you you will come home and complain to mummy she did not talk to me am i right no i used to go and ask why what happened why are you not asked, talking i would ask directly straight okay you you are you are you are different uh, lalita madam but it doesn't happen every time like that what i'm trying to say is that you the, the fundamental requirement of all entities is to have a confirmation of identity you went and talked to that person and told her that i need confirmation of identity since that other person confirmed your identity but you were also not friends with everybody else some people you were friends with some people you did not like and you would separate your friends from non friends it's no fault of theirs they all human beings are the same so lata narayan and madam for the first time after many uh, in the class you are asking a question please go ahead sir just a, a question on on something that you said just about 3 4 minutes back you said yes. this sense of identity is required by both uh, uh, like jeevans and jadam also i think you use the word jadam if i am not mistaken so i just yeah. wanted clarity on that because as uh, living beings i am and i mean living uh, means even lions and tigers and cows and all that we need that sense of identity but jadam don't come under the category no i mean they don't need a let me ask you a question i agree with you okay let's start with the premise that you are correct you go to a temple you do prana pratishta now we all have in our astika samaj one thing called kula devam the kula devam by itself has no senses so where does its ability to become a family deity happen because over centuries the family has gone there and given what is essentially a jadam an ability to to uh, cognize I and mean, it's not a cognition cognition kind of thing it gets its own personality 
and that personality begins to relate to members of the family. What is the basis on which we say that if you do Kanyadhanam, 20, 20, 20 sets of ancestors, 10 before and 10 after, 21 sets, you in the middle are as switched. Why do they say that three, three sets we know, we do Shraddha? What, thereafter seven sets, where do they, what is their role? The point is that unless, every, I mean every particular, uh, these, these are all Jadam, essentially your, our ancestors are Jadam. Once they have, they have, they are died, their senses are, are all finished. But how is it that we are doing Shraddham for these people? Because there is something beyond that particular, they are all identities who have a cognitive capability. So what we are saying is that whether it is a Jeeva or a Jadam, it has a cognitive capability. Am I answering your question? No, sir. No? No. Because I, I disagree with that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm missing No, 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 please, please say your, no, no, uh, blunt, blunt answer. Because is you are all. the, you, you, you've read it all and you're the master here. I'm just asking you this as a, as a Madam, 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 no, 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 let's stop it. Let's stop it. Let's stop it. There is no such thing as master, servant, nothing like that. Okay, we are all one. We are all trying to reach moksha. Okay. Now, the thing is that if I'm wrong, I'm willing to correct myself. The question is, I want only that the discussion is based on logic or critical thinking. Now, we will we will keep thrashing this backwards and forwards until we come to a conclusion. There is no problem with that. So, so sir, where I, uh, I uh, uh, disagree is that, yes, uh, you know, uh, the example you took of uh, the deities and temples and all of that, we give the deity the importance. So it is our belief. So faith has the capability to move mountains, as they say. So we strongly believe in it. So there are a lot of people, you know, who say that now if I pray to this God and if I say uh, if some something like this happens, then I will break 100 coconuts or I will do 100 uh, uh, Pradeshtanams or I will go 100 times around you. And then it actually works and then they do that also. They actually break the 100 coconuts. In. But the fundamental moving thing over there is your belief. So the deity that you are talking about in the temple gets that importance, gets that, uh, uh, gets those powers because of the belief reposed in the deity by the humans and not the deity itself. So, again, so what you are saying is that if the deity was not there, if the deity was not there, it would not make a difference. It makes a difference because the deity is there, sir. But that doesn't mean that the deity itself uh, uh, needs recognition. I'm saying we are giving it the recognition. That is a different thing. But does the deity need recognition? I'm not Can I ask you a question? That. Can I ask you a question? Why is it that we have the logic of the Kuladeva? I'm, I, I'm really enjoying this conversation, okay? Because you are doing critical thinking and I'm perfectly happy with this. Um, what is the logic for a Kuladeva? Number one. Number two, why did we need to do, go into so much tamasha for the Ram temple? Why are they now talking about Gyanwapi mosque? Why are they talking about Mathura? There was no evidence that Rama lived except it is Anumana. That is, it is a, it is by, uh, by uh, what you call, uh, by, uh, we know that Rama lived, I mean, we believe Rama lived, okay? There is no real hard evidence. The question is, uh, one minute. To take Can all I of do, these... do I say now or later? No, no, no. Lalta, madam, we'll, we'll, we'll come to you a little later because now this is uh, a question that Lalta, madam, has raised, which, which I'm trying to answer and afterwards we'll come to you. The question really here is that the deity, with that if, you, if you're saying that you repose something in the deity and it is not the deity itself, but your reposition. It means that if the deity was not there, you would still be able to repose it in yourself. Which means that the deity is not required. Which means that the, the Jadam has no uh, identity of itself. 
or if it, it, it has no it has no capability of exhibiting a um, uh, a reaction to you am i correct lata madam sir i um, i i am not sure what exactly you expect of me but i am not convinced about no, i'm 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 saying that i'm 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 generating a conversation because at the end of the day there is no point we, we both need to have a starting point and a method a methodology which we follow which is logical so can What's i have my point? logic just in uh, very briefly uh uh the the core of advaita is that atman is brahman that's what adi shankara said and uh, 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 that's that's what i mean <laughs> as a as an advaiti follower i i also strongly believe in it but 99.99% of the population on this earth if you go and tell them you are your own god they will laugh at you and they'll probably call you mad so people need a belief system and 99.99% of the population need that belief system because tomorrow if you go and tell a, a, a corrupt person or a, you know or a thief or a murderer that you are your own god it's a wow so what i did was right i murdered and you know i am my own god you see so he will justify so 99% of uh, of the world's population needs a belief system needs faith so that they follow the right path for some people they need faith to follow the right path or uh, out of a fear you know my god you will go to hell if you do a murder or if you commit a th uh, theft or if you uh, you know uh, uh, say nasty words so it is more meant as a, as a uh, as a tool to ensure that people follow a good way of life or the right path because people oh, don't sense. understand that atman is brahman but that can automatically mean that all jadams need uh, uh, you know uh, like what you said they also need an identification no i disagree sir that's 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 can my can i ask you a question can i ask you a question where is the evidence you have that the atman is brahman you are talking from a belief system here the problem is very straightforward you are coming from a position of having been conditioned in a particular manner that this makes sense the issue here is not that you are right or wrong or somebody else is right or wrong or somebody else does this or not no the issue here is what is it that makes so so there is only one thing that makes Uh, that can be called perfectly correct that is called pratyaksha that is my experience of absolute truth is the only real permanent existence and that is what sri krishna talks about in chapter 2 and he says that the brahman is the sole repository of the truth that is the only unchanging state everything else is a derived state here the question really is that no matter what you say if you say that the atman is the is is brahman how then you have to you have to prove that it is so and only you can prove it to yourself nobody else can prove it to you because at this point of time as you rightly said you disagree there is nothing wrong with that disagreement the issue here is having said you disagree you have to prove that it is true not to others to yourself and that is a fundamental requirement of all pramanas did you understand did you get what i am saying if you say no, that no i am understood sir i am understood i am understood what i am saying here is that i, I concur with everything you have said the brahman exists and you also said anything other than brahman is maya so the objective in this class is to ar arrive at moksha by doing away with maya correct mm. so to we need the veil of maya to either pierce the veil of maya you can do it in multiple ways either you can pierce the veil of maya or you can transcend it something something like if you want to don't want to get caught in the traffic of uh, bangalore you'll bypass bangalore and go to take the next road simple as that so we that uh, so I, i so now that we we both agree on that sir mm -hmm. where does the concept of you know praying to the kula devam and that is a path that is there are hundreds millions of paths to arrive at the brahman to do away with the maya and arrive at the brahman perfect okay so uh, so uh, your belief in a kuladevam or a non belief in it has nothing to do with achieving your uh, doing away with brahman to uh, maya to arrive at the brahman 
See, uh, I, I am not okay, saying... The issue that, here, the yes. issue here is very straightforward. While you are correct in an intellectual manner, it's absolutely no, nothing wrong with the way you're doing the intellectual part. The problem comes when you go into the cognitive state. That is, when you exist, uh, let me give you a simple example. As I said, my grandfather used to practice yoga. And what happened is that in his yoga trance, he had no, he came, we, they came from a very poor family. No, he, no, no capability, no, no studies, nothing. I mean, he studied till 12th standard, but nothing more than that. No music, nothing. But in his yoga trance, he used to get, uh, he used to generate kirtanas. That is actually our Paurushika. It, did, it came to him, he didn't even know. And next day morning, he would just write it down and uh, he would make my aunt sing. He, is, he has composed 1500 kirtanas, 700 to 800 bhajans. The point is, where did it come from? The next question is, when I will give you another personal example. When I was, there were certain things that were happening to me. Somebody said, there is something called Prashnam. In Kerala, it is very, very famous. So they said, you do Prashnam. And the Prashnam came out and said that you have been, your family has been going to Lord Murga and you have not been going there. And so there is an anger in that deity towards you. This happened to me. Now I am I am a complete. Uh, I it never I it never occurred to me that something like this could happen. So now tell me one thing, uh, Lata Madam. How can this happen? Lata Madam. Sir, we all. So this is again a, a veil of Maya, which temporarily at that phase was removed for your grandfather. So he was able to feel those vibrations and he came up with, uh, you know, all those uh, songs and bhajans. Now, for example, the same example can be given on my uh, my husband's side. His, uh, the, the, there used to be a Kuladevam and apparently two generations back, uh, I think his great grandmother or somebody didn't have children for, a several, for several years. Then somebody said, you know, you pray to Lord Tirupati. She prayed to Lord Tirupati and then she had six children. So what happened after the last three generations, Akuladevam has now become uh, Tirupati. So, you know, uh, at different points in time, uh, uh, there are these things that happen. Uh, but uh, again, we, uh, I go back to the fundamental question because, you know, in India, we have these belief systems. Like you said, for three generations, we do all the Shradam and there are some people who actually talk about uh, 20 generations or 11 generations or, or uh, uh, whatever else but the western world uh, in, in india is a small population we have 80 uh, percent uh, being western world who probably don't have any of these systems so are we saying that uh, then uh, they all don't uh, achieve brahman or they don't uh, 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 no it's not like that uh, we okay, have, so can ask you, we do have, you have any do we have any record of people in the west other the last uh, last few are probably Mo, uh, Prophet Muhammad and uh, Jesus. These are the people who probably achieved uh, moksha. Other than that, do we have a record of people achieving moksha from the West? At least I don't have any record. Uh, the next question then, sir, is uh, what is the definition of moksha? Because you have you Merger have with the Brahman, that is very straightforward. No, you have picked on uh, two religious systems. Uh, you have talked about Jesus Christ and then you have talked about Muhammad and the Prophet. Uh, okay, we can even talk about Moses because they, they are all uh, religious figures. So, uh, are we so saying that... These, uh, are people, we, these are people who have achieved moksha and who have built a framework. See, the quest, let's, let's not confuse ourselves. Achieving moksha is achieving moksha. That is merger with the Brahman. What you then derive that as a system for the people around you is the stuff that becomes a religion. Let us not confuse these two things. They have achieved their, 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 their state of moksha. After that, they built a framework for the people around them. That has become a religion. That is a totally different thing. We should not confuse these two.
every cap everybody is capable of achieving moksha we have to achieve it ourselves am i correct or wrong no i agree sir i 100% agree with you but there are different paths to doing this and perhaps correct. the path that we have evolved in india is uh definitely better because we have uh, like you say several several thousands of examples of people who have achieved uh, moksha ramakrishna paramahansa we have we have so many people uh, yes. uh but that uh, but that is not uh, saying that this is the only way to achieve uh, correct that. who says that nobody is saying that nobody is saying that so we don't have to have uh, temples and deities we do i am uh, so we go back to the fundamental question of a jadam needing recognition i uh, that's that's that was my okay. fundamental question so yes. the question is you don't know you also don't know that the jadam does not need for a, a recognition you don't correct know. sir i also do not know that but and therefore i am unable to subscribe Re to your point relate to it, which yes. is fair which is fair see the point is at this point of time see it, you must remember everything is for the present at this point of time you do not have a method of cognizing a jadam as having a identity correct i don't yes, either sir. for me it is still a form and a function it is still an an, an item the thing is that that is not wrong the as the practice of yoga increases you are now stuck in what we call stoola sharira all of us are stuck in stoola sharira As we go from annamaya kosha to pranamaya kosha to manamaya kosha to vidyanamaya kosha, this separation that we have with the others will begin to drop. Do you understand what I'm saying? Today the problem is not where you are. The problem is the effort required to remove the veil that you have. have i are you able to understand that part sir remove the veil for what sir see you are saying you are separate from this you are separate from that particular deity that deity is a jadam i am a jeeva atma has got is the brahman whatever you are saying there is nothing right or wrong in this the thing is that you consider this object to be separate from you you consider your body to have all this atma shatma whatever it is the pro, the thing is that only with the practice of yoga whichever path you take whether it is jnana yoga bhakti yoga whatever yoga you take ultimately what will happen is that the separation that you have the the hold of maya will start reducing how do you know that the hold of maya is reducing the only way you will know that the hold of maya is reducing is when you begin to stop seeing the differentiation between the various objects am i making sense yes sir i i agree that we need to have a sense of identification with plants and with uh, animals and with every other human being i fully subscribe to that but i do not believe that we need to have a sense of identification with the mobile phone that me and the mobile phone are in, in one sense the same that is where i i i have a this 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 is all i have in no no the so example i'm, <laughs> I'm using only as an example sir but i'm just saying that an inanimate thing cannot want to have a sense of identification that's that that's, you do that not know the only fundamental thing that you do not know you are assuming it sir but the thing is that when i subscribe yeah, 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 to do, view, do you know do you know or do no, you no but when i follow that then it is the equivalent of superstition no because when madam, i am not uh, uh, me, uh, uh, lata madam see the issue the question i ask is very specific do you know or do you assume we are both indulging in critical thinking do you know or do you assume sir until it is proved to me that the jadam has this thing i will only uh, think that what i know is the truth perfect perfect who is going to prove it to you it cannot be proved sir no you can prove it to yourself you have only made an assumption there is no proof you don't have any proof that proof will come only from pratyaksha and you don't have that pratyaksha yet 
you have not cognized the Brahman. Only when you cognize the Brahman will you know whether this is true or false. Am I making sense? So yes and no. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, okay. we'll move on. No, no, no. Please, please stay with this because it, I, this is a beautiful case study. You are saying that Jadam is inanimate. It has no Purusha. It has no identity. Yes. Correct. I am saying that it is right now an assumption because you have no way of proving whether it has an identity or it does not have an identity. You are not proving it. You are making an assumption. So, for example, let's take one of your earlier, uh, all your classes, what have you said? Brahman, he, he goes through a shake-up and then he wants to manifest. So, he wants to manifest as a tree, as a plant, as an ant, as a lion, as a human being. Hmm. So why would he want to manifest as a stone? That is not it's manifestation, not no. So it then, is the, no. that is, is why I am saying the fundamental presumption, because we built up this whole class saying that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Brahman feels a vibration and that is when the manifestation starts happening. That is when we Correct. said the whole, so the, uh, he, he manifests as an animate thing. I am saying anything that has life. I am talking about a tree, a plant, a piece of grass, because that has life. But to say that you know he that it manifested unto a stone, that is very difficult for me to follow. That Because okay. why would he I want think. to do that? Why would Brahman want to do that? Why would he want to manifest as a stone? Brahman is not manifesting as a stone. No, in Please, one let's, of the let's, let's clear it. Let's clear one air. Brahman is what neutral. It is just a holding mechanism. It is just a framework on which everything else exists. The existence of a stone itself is a manifestation. With, now the stone, the water, these are all Panchabhutas. They are the fundamentals on which everything else is built up. So the question is that the Jiva or the Jadam, all of them come from a from the Panchabhutas. And then each of the consciousness, there is a mix and match and some of them manifest as Jadam, some of them manifest as Jiva, some of them manifest as mobile phone, some of them manifest as idols. All of them are fundamentally the same. Which is why throughout, Sri Krishna says, use Samadrishti, look at everything in the same manner. Here you are differentiating Jiva and Jadam. I am not saying it is wrong. I am saying that I am I'm not also saying I am right. I am saying that you have only, you, you have to prove it to yourself whether you are right or you are wrong. And the only way you can do it is by go, becoming the source. By merging with the source and then looking into the creation of all of Maya. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Now, yes, yes. No, we're making sense. Yes, yes. You are saying I have to. Uh, it is. It is for something we we have to work on ourselves to prove or disprove it. Correct. I'm not saying you're wrong. Who? Somebody is saying something. So I'm not saying it. I I, I have absolutely no uh, no. Uh, I have no uh, uh, friction with what you're saying. I'm only saying we have to. You have to prove it. And the only way you can prove it by rich is, is by becoming part of the moksha, going into moksha. And when you become go into moksha, there will be stages which you will experience. And one of the stages that you will experience is non-duality. That is, you will not see yourself as different from anything anywhere. So now let's go to Minu Madam. Minu Madam, quick. We don't have much time. Minu Madam. Sir, the problem, sorry. Um, I was getting mixed up with the buttons. Uh, sir, um, my question was, you had two questions. One is that, uh, which has risen out of what you had said earlier. Uh, one is that um, when you say, when we have Pratyaksham is the only Pramanam. Okay? No, pra so, pra final Pramanam. Yeah, final Pramanam. So, uh, when a person who has never ever gone through that, you know, getting that pramanam, how will he recognize that he has found the pramanam? Very good question. Uh, question, I'll tell second also. 
second is little simpler uh, i think what you are talking is pure pure advaita right uh, we are i don't know what i'm saying i don't i, I i'm i'm not i'm in our class i'm saying because because if we are going to take say for example uh, Uh, the we should the advaita and all the advaita schools and all that they are radically totally different from what no they are not it, that is the problem no you know what has happened is we have been told all these things there is absolutely no difference advaita flows out of the vedas okay the dvaita flows out of the vedas everything flows out of the vedas that is why we are called astika everything is resident in the vedas the thing is the way it is interpreted changes no but uh, but uh, for example dvaita has a very important concept that they don't uh, think of themselves as uh, the merging their identity with the brahman it is like the jiva will remain separate forever from brahman okay. and will only why, why is that brahman why let's, is that why is that let me let, let let's hold the thought for a minute you are here the idol is there mm. you are saying i i am different from the idol mm. for as long as the so similarly you got the universe the center of universe is vishnu mm. you are saying that i am resident in vishnu i can never become vishnu but the minute you start uh, so for as long as the prarabdha karma exists you will die and according to your karma you will go to the various levels and when you have exhausted your Uh, ability your 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 all your bank balance you will come back to experience the next prarabdha of the karma this cycle is never ending and according to dvaita basically that center of identity is vishnu the, the thing is that that is only one part of the dvaitik uh, vishishta dvaita says that you can move you can break that bond and merge with the brahman but nowhere do they say that the source is not brahman no no i didn't say that i'm simply saying the schools of thought are different in that the final goal is different for each one ultimately let me ask you a question the goal is the object you are the subject the minute you reach the object there is no difference between you and the object no there is no duality there is you and the object only whether you take vish advaita vishishta advaita whatever advaita doesn't matter bhakti yoga gnana yoga everything ultimately is the merger with the object in one place that is why vivekananda says no if you if you lose yourself in a game of football you have you have reached am i making sense so there is an object there is you the minute you merge with the object that there is neither subject nor object there is nothing there is only brahman and that is yoga it doesn't matter what path you use you are cooking you've lost everything you're you completely one with the cook that is ekagrat that is you're in a state of yoga that's all there is unnecessarily we complicate this whole business Meenu madam am i making sense yes sir okay now lalita madam uh, yeah uh, for the previous question about uh, brahman and all see we if we see the he is anupama that is we can't give any example upama we it is beyond any uh, words or language or uh, irrespective of which language uh, it is beyond words themselves but if we have to take the possibly the nearest thing uh, brahman is something like it is not that he uh, manifests only in this and that and uh, everywhere jada or uh, i mean uh, nirjiva or jiva or jada or anywhere it is simply we are all in the brahman just like we are in the space the wherever whether the we are the space is inside the building inside the house outside the house it's everywhere it's inside the aeroplane outside the aeroplane it's everywhere under the ground outside the i mean underneath the earth outside everywhere there is space everything is within the space this whole universe is, is within the space that is brahman 
and um, uh, then there is manifestation that is the in creation then the um, uh, in the evolutionary way or whatever way um, the on the jada the, like the rocks and the stones and uh, you know the jiva uh, uh, in the trees or earth and all animals that is a manifestation or creation we can say but so it is everywhere so brahman is not only the uh, the space uh, the beyond space or the it is just is and uh, so if we look at it like that i mean if we look think like that it is much easier to un- uh, to get a glimpse of G- G- brahman um, it, it is like space it's everywhere within I agree outside with, i agree with what you say no no not just that and even in the rock and not just that my point is it is not just the manifestation it is the process also it is the uh, like we are um, we endeavor to understand we endeavor to learn no, no, even no, the no, process no no, no. everything Definitely is process no. everything is nothing, everything no nah, maya is, maybe maya karma. but what that is uh, karma. karma also no, no, yes no, okay no, no, no. okay that is karma let us not mix up these two maya is saguna brahmana nirguna brahmana yes, is yes. the state of null so 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 please let's not confuse these two what we are talking about i i i understand where you come from that you are trying to explain what brahman is unfortunately brahman cannot be explained it has to explained be exactly yes it has to be experienced when the only yeah. way it can be experienced is through pratyaksha so the question yes. really and is to that get to pratyaksha to get to pratyaksha uh, I, thinking to talk yeah. as the something beyond space space and beyond you know i mean so that, that is a, helps yeah, to that us that is a that is an approximation unfortunately this yes. is an anumana yes. or it is an approximation uh, yeah anupama yeah the yeah. point making is that the thing uh, see the, the i think the take away from this class is very uh, is, is is quite significant and that is that at best you can ex- ex- uh, approximate brahman so how do you know that this is brahman that was my question uh, in the beginning correct correct the point is that none of us today can explain it to each other claim that yeah i way, i, I had this vision of this uh, you know me being one with the entire uh, cosmos and then say that i had this transformational experience anyone yes. can say that because there's no yardstick by which the litmus test by which Uh, um, at least which i know which can tell that okay yeah this person has seen the problem has it uh, no 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 i'll i'll give you a very simple example okay i was about 19 years old and an engineering student so my grandfather was the yog uh, was a yogi uh, i've already you all know about him. one day i asked him this question i said tata have you seen god he said yes and i was like i took a step back and i said then you know my usual uh, that teenage arrogance kicked in and said hey, come on dad what are you saying so he told me a very simple thing he said vishwanath just because you can't cognize something don't say it does not exist and that has been the defining thing for me throughout life i cannot explain nor can you explain my grandfather could not explain to me even though he had reached that state nobody can explain it so okay. sir then this brings us to the field called faith which you were not wanting to you know like even mention faith is that in which you have belief not necessarily